Hello, everyone. Welcome to All Things College and Career, the podcast to turn to for all of your college and career planning needs. We are your hosts, Meg Gary and Bobby Ryan, owners of Academic and Career Advising Services located in Kennebunk, Maine. We started this podcast to provide helpful information to listeners researching careers, colleges, or academic majors. Choosing your career or a college is such a big decision, which is why our motto is learn before you leap. Before investing a lot of time or money, it's so important to do your research and to really explore your options. Each podcast will offer interesting stories and valuable insights that we think you will find entertaining and informative. Subscribe to our podcast and you'll have it ready to go on your playlist every Monday morning. So learn before you leap each week with us. Today, we have two amazingly talented guests, Katie Hagerty Gray and Peter Hagerty, siblings who grew up water skiing and have turned their passion into careers. Katie runs a water skiing show called The Main Attraction. She tells us how she came into this career and what it takes to run this show and how the team and the show have grown over the years since she has been at the helm. Katie is also a nurse and works at a school with disabled children. Find out how she's incorporating her love of the children with water skiing. Those two careers are more than enough for most people. But Katie is a go-getter and has started another business, 207 Water Ski School, where she provides lessons to all ages and at all levels. Peter has gone professional and is a performer at Legoland in Florida. Find out how Pete became a professional water skier. Learn what a typical day is like and get advice on how you can get into this profession. Hear about the crazy tricks he does in his performances and how perfecting the gainer landed him the job. Whether you water ski, would like to start, or just like watching a great performance, you will find this podcast interesting and entertaining. So let's get to our conversation with Katie and Peter. Hello, Katie Gray and Peter Hagerty. Welcome to All Things College and Career. Thank you so much for doing the podcast. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. We're excited. Uh, So glad you guys are here. Welcome, Katie and Peter. So where are we talking to you guys from? Oh, well, I'm in cold, dreary, rainy, snowy Maine. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm in hot, humid Florida. (laughs) Yeah, hot and humid. Well, we have no sympathy for that, Peter, because we're also in cold, dreary, rainy Maine today. (laughs) But we did have a beautiful weekend, so we've got that to be thankful for. Yeah, we really did. It was a little bit of a tease, but... Yeah. So, hey, Katie and Peter, let's get right into it. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah, it does sound good. Can you each tell us three things you love about your job? Sure. Go ahead, Pete. Oh, wait. You have (laughs) a better job. I'll talk first. (laughs) (laughs) I always joke and say Peter's literally living the dream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I am a professional water skier at Legoland, Florida. Uh, we perform usually on average three shows a day, sometimes two shows a day. But the three things I would say I love about my job would be number one, performing in front of a crowd every day. The adrenaline rush is, is pretty much like no other to land on stage and you know everyone's applauding what you just did on the mm. water. And that's really rewarding. Oh, uh, sure. The second thing I love about my job would be that it really is my passion. I do it and I, it's really awesome that I get paid for it. But even if I wasn't getting paid, I would still do it. Mm. Um, and I guess the third thing that's pretty awesome about my job is the schedule. It's um, it's really lenient. It's really laid back. We really don't have to be into work until about 1030 every day, 10 o'clock, oh. 1030. So there's a lot of time during the day to get you know things done outside of work, uh, like working on the house and, and things like that that are normal in life. So. Wow, you really are living the dream. I think so. I'm, I'm a little jealous right now. I yeah. don't know about you, Matt. I'm very jealous. <laughs> very jealous. I, I'm wondering, though, Pete, if you have to do a ton of training besides the performance or the performances enough to keep you in shape. So, yes. Yeah, so during work, if you fall during a show, it is mandatory that right after the show, you go out and practice before the next show. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of one of the rules. And if you don't, we have a fine system. You get fined and you basically just put a dollar in the bucket and that goes towards things like um, we have a little kitchen and, you know, they'll buy ketchup or mustard, whatever we need for our kitchen. Right. Um, so that's how the fine system works. But we currently do not have any fitness programs that we are mandatory to do besides practicing on the water. Um, right. We are currently looking into getting a gym at our stadium to work out in between. And that would probably start to be like a mandatory thing like once or twice a week. Yeah, and that'd the, be a nice luxury. Yeah, that would be great. The other thing 
we need to get onto Katie as well. But I just wanted to ask you, what do you do when it's super hot in Florida? Do you still perform no matter yeah. what the weather? Yeah. So uh, during the summer, no matter how hot it gets, really, we will perform shows. Mm -hmm. um, the only weather we will cancel for is thunderstorms. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. And we'll we'll have wind up to, you know, 20 miles per hour with 30 mile per hour gusts and white caps coming off the lake and we'll still perform a show. Um, wow. We will wow. Dial it back. Yeah, we will dial it back where we'll only have three jumpers instead of four jumpers out on the water at a time, but that's pretty much, yeah, we won't, so we won't cancel for heat. Yeah. Wow. It's Florida. You get to expect it. Plus Absolutely. you're in the water, keeping right. you cool. Right. <laughs> so Katie, how about you? What are oh. the three things you love about your job? And Katie, I should just interrupt, has a couple of yeah, that's Different true. Role. So <laughs> right, so All that's right. going to be tricky. <laughs> yeah. Well, my main job, I'm uh, a nurse at a school for students with disabilities. So the best part about that job is the kids are so fun and you know, we have OT there, PT there, speech there. And we have the opportunity almost daily to take them out for into the community for different activities. So I love being able to do that with the kids because as the nurse, they also need nursing care in the community. So we take them out swimming, we take them to hippotherapy, we take them snow skiing, kayaking. And my goal this summer is to hopefully take them adaptive water skiing. Oh, yeah, that's fabulous. That's awesome. And what a unique way to work as a nurse. <laughs> yeah, I think it's probably the best way to work as a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. And with all of your background in parks and recreation and so forth, you must be perfectly equipped to do all of that. Yeah, it works out quite well. I, I definitely love getting out and about with the kids. Oh, that's amazing. And so you've also run a competition ski team and you have started your own business of teaching water skiing. So maybe you could touch on those as well. Sure. Yep. I um, took over as director for main attraction water ski show team. Oh gosh, probably like eight-ish years ago now from my parents who started the team about 30 years ago. And they had done a few shows a summer throughout you know, their career as being presidents and directors. And I just kind of wanted to build the team and do more shows throughout the summer. So I took over and kind of got back to a true scripted show, kind of like what you would see at SeaWorld or Leg go land mm -hmm. and started having more practices and more shows throughout the summer. Enjoyed that a lot. So got the team into competing. So we now compete in the Eastern region tournament every summer. Wow. That, that's amazing, Katie. And Peter's down in Florida where the weather is beautiful year round pretty much. How do you handle having such a short season in Maine? It is hard. So we actually get into the gym in January. Um, and when I say into the gym, we rent out or they're kind enough to let us use Sanford School Systems. Um, we use one of the local gymnasiums in town and we set up ropes to the walls and we set up mats all around us and we practice building pyramids, doing our doubles. We practice our bows. We've been learning dances inside and we just do that once a week in January all the way until we get on the water, which is usually late May. Wow. Whoa. Late May, the water is still pretty cold, but. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> uh, that must uh, make you feel so much more equipped if you've done all that versus yes, just. Absolutely. So Katie and Peter, as you mentioned, Katie, water skiing runs in your family for sure. You mentioned your mom and dad doing it for, what'd you say, 20 years, 30, 30 years? years now. 30 yeah, years. So yep. can you talk about your parents a little bit and how they may have influenced you and where they were skiers? Sure. So my mom's from Wisconsin and my dad's from Massachusetts. They both skied in their hometowns growing up. Um, my mom skied on a water ski team in Wisconsin. They didn't have any near my dad in Massachusetts, so he did not. But um, they both ended up moving down to Florida and worked at SeaWorld um, of Orlando together. That's where they met, but they also were able to, with their water skiing careers, work all over the place. They worked in Texas. They worked in Ohio. They did travel shows over in Japan. They went to Brazil. They went to Martinique. They, they've just been everywhere water skiing. And once again, just like Peter getting paid for their passion. So Wow. And that's what a fabulous job to be able to do all that traveling, doing yeah. something you love. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yep. And Peter, what do you think? You want to add to that? Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's been an awesome experience growing up with parents who were basically at the top of their game, I guess, you know, back in the day and, and really lived through the peak of water skiing and learned so much. And that we grew up learning from that, which was quite amazing to grow up in that environment. So how old were you guys when you first got on water skis? I began water skiing when I was 
three, I believe, <laughs> is what I was told. I believe that. <laughs> uh, and my first time being in a water ski show was for the main attraction team at age six on the kneeboard. Wow. How about you, Katie? You know, I don't think I was actually up on water skis until I was like seven, but I was in a ski show at age five, just riding on shoulders and doing doubles. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you were used to being up high over the water, going yeah. at speed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's awesome. So also your brother, Joey, and his wife, Victoria, and Katie, your husband, Evan, also ski. So it's a real family affair. So can you say a few things about Joey and Victoria and Evan? Sure. I think we always kind of make it a joke that to date a Hegarty, you have to water ski and <laughs> <laughs> right. seems to work out that way. Um, it's in the genes. You exactly. can't deny it. <laughs> <laughs> or, at, or at least drive a boat, I would yeah, say. <laughs> right, exactly. right. So uh, yeah, Victoria did a little skiing before she met Joe. Um, she grew up on a lake up in Lincoln, Maine. Evan did no water skiing before he met me, but now he's definitely one of the strongest water skiers and males on our team. So that works very nicely. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, it's the best part about water skiing and, and being on a water ski team is it's a family sport. So every single family member can be involved. And I just love that about it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's great. That is a great yeah. aspect of it. So Peter, I wanted to ask you what it's like to have your brother and his wife and your brother-in-law, Evan, and your girlfriend all being some professional water skiers and just skiers in general. So what's that like for you? Uh, it's really awesome to be on the water at the same time and everyone's comfortable and kind of in their own environment, especially, you know, how our immediate family uh, all grew up doing it. So now with all of our significant others doing it as well, it, it all makes for one big happy family, I guess. Yeah, that's such a unique experience and must be so fun. Absolutely. So your mom and dad's were the one to start the main attraction and water ski show team. I'm not sure if that's what it was called in its origin or not, but can the two of you tell us a little bit about that, the origins of the team and how you came to take it over, Katie? Sure. So when my parents moved to town back in, gosh, 1988, they moved to Sanford and they uh, noticed the ski jump in the middle of number one pond. So they um, found out that the square pond water ski team, as well as others, use the pond, number one pond, for a three event tournament. So that's the distance jumping, the slaloming around the buoys and trick skiing. So they joined the Square Pond Ski Club and introduced the show ski aspect to it. And that's where they got the name Main Attraction Water Ski Show Team and kind of converted some of the members who were three event members over to the show ski part of it. And eventually the three event team ended up dying out. There's nobody who competes anymore. But yeah, we saw the show ski team going strong. Wow, that's such an interesting story. And you do a big show every 4th of July in the town. Yeah, my parents started that a while ago. And so we do a show for our Independence Day celebration on July 3rd every year. That's when Sanford celebrates. And then um, we started doing shows every Thursday night in July. This July, Thursday falls on the 4th. So we're actually doing the last Thursday of June and then skipping the 4th and then continuing on with every Thursday in July. Wow. So that's a lot of performances. You guys have stepped it right up. Yeah, <laughs> we absolutely have. So how many people are part of your team? We have over 60 members now. Wow. That are on the team. Yeah. And, and I mean, that goes from skiers to, you know, the sideline help to our announcers, to music people, to the boat drivers, to the spotters. Just right. Help. There's a lot that goes into yeah, the show. Absolutely. I'm always amazed at the rope management. That just <laughs> amazes me. Like, how do those not get all tangled up when you guys come flying in and out? There's like 12 skiers going out at once. <laughs> yeah. Our, our doc boss, Karina, does a heck of a good yeah. job. <laughs> she must. She must. And I remember Bobby's husband commenting on how impressed he was with the boat driving. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because we became new boaters not too long ago, and we were horrible at it. So <laughs> yeah. We really respect a good boat driver. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's but, so awesome to hear, because a lot of the times the boat drivers get unnoticed, but they're right, definitely right. a huge part of it. 
Right. And of course, the boat driving and the ropes, you know, you're already in awe over all the skiing. It's just, yeah, it <laughs> goes yeah. without saying. So you kind of talked, Katie, about Main Attraction Water Ski Show, mostly when your parents were running it and you have taken it over. You touched on that a little bit. But what has that been like? And do you enjoy this new role you're in? Yes, I love it. I keep joking that it's, I don't ever want to give it away, but as soon as Peter moves back to town, it's all his. <laughs> <laughs> like a welcome yeah. home present. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's definitely it's definitely a lot of work. Um, when we start in the gym in January, I'm starting on my computer and trying to think of theme ideas. And once you finally have that figured out, then you have to come up with your storyline and write a script for the whole show and decide what every single act's going to be. We technically have 13 acts that go on the water, but you know, there might be three boats running during one act. So it Mm. gets busy and it's definitely a lot. And then, you know, figuring out music for every single act and figuring out the skits that will go in between and working on a dance. And it's definitely a lot of work, but it's, it's so rewarding to see it all come together in the summer. And I just, oh, I just love when the shoreline is lined with people there to see us. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, that is exciting. So Katie, can you talk about any specific changes you've made since you've taken it over? Um, I'd say the biggest one is definitely competing. Before I took over, my parents never brought the team to compete. They brought them, you know, to road shows, which we still continue to do. Um, this will be our third year heading up to Rangeley, Maine, or actually Aquasic, Maine, to do the Aquasic Day Festival. Last year, we went up to Wilton, Maine and did the Wilton Blueberry Festival. We've done shows for summer camps, overnight summer camps. We're working on a show right now for the Alton Bandstand Festival on Lake Winnipesaukee. Oh. Um, Um, for this summer. So that would be pretty neat. But yeah, so the competition aspect, my parents never got into, but we thought we'd take that on. So we actually applied for a grant through the National Show Ski Association, the team development grant, which we ended up winning. And um, oh, no kidding. That's amazing. Congratulations. Congratulations. So that was a probably five, four or five years ago now, but the team ended up being able to fly out to Wisconsin to get some extra instruction from some bigger show ski teams out there, which really definitely helped us. Wow, that's impressive. Can you tell us what one of your proudest moments was, the competition team, or do you have a proudest moment? Sure. My most favorite, proudest moment of all was definitely when we did our first four-tier pyramid. We had practiced quite a bit in the gym with it, and had never practiced it just at all on the water, but we had had some good shows and um, we had a really good show that one particular night. And I said, come on, we're ready. Let's do this. So we put all the pieces in place and ended up going out there and nailing it. It was pretty awesome. Uh, Okay, Katie. So what does a four tier pyramid look like? How many people on bottom and how many next row and how many ropes? So we have to have six guys on the bottom. Um, And then up from there, we have three girls. And then on top of those three girls, we have two and then one up on top. So we have to have the six guys on the bottom because there's six girls up from there that all need to come down to a guy. So wow, so that's got to be like, that's got to be like at least 20 feet up in the air, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I it's definitely up there. We, we had to practice in a gym that we don't always practice in a couple two winters ago, and we were almost hitting the ceiling in there. So (laughs) wow, wow, it's high. Wow. That must, yeah. Have you ever Jeez. had any uh, serious crashes or? Um, yeah, we've definitely not in the gym. Luckily, uh, one time the ropes did pull out of the wall, but <laughs> we were only like two tiers up. So that wasn't bad. But on the water, we've had a few, um, but no serious injuries. Thank God. Knock on wood. We're, we're very careful about making sure we're only putting stuff out on the water that, you know, has a pretty good chance of making it in and nobody getting hurt. Yeah, glad to hear that. (laughs) Do you have a long-term goal or vision, Katie, for the main attraction ski team? Well, I'd say our short-term goal for this summer is to, I recently over the winter, we got my adaptive water ski certification to do an adaptive clinic. So that's our short-term goal for our our team to be able to put on a clinic this summer, an adaptive water ski clinic. And then our long-term goal is we'd love to be able to go and compete at um, nationals. Uh, It's nationals at one location every year or is it move around? It moves around every year. Um, and there's the division one and a division two. The division one is definitely for those bigger teams, which were not close to those bigger teams that, you know, can have up to 175 members. So wow. we're, we'd be competing at the D2 national level, but still, you know, it'd be quite an accomplishment for us. So 
Uh, looking at that within the next couple of years. Wow, that's a great goal. That is. Yeah. Good luck. I hope you guys Thank get you. there. Yeah. Thank you. Us too. <laughs> so Peter, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Uh, <laughs> Peter. We are getting on to you. <laughs> it's a problem when you're with three women, Peter. <laughs> yeah. hey, that's right. <laughs> So, Peter, you were a star performer for the main attraction water ski team show, and I've definitely seen you a few times, and you are amazing, and also pretty popular with the girls in the crowd, I noticed. <laughs> yeah, I, I happen to notice that as well. Yeah, it's hard not to notice yeah. that. Um, so do you want to tell us about that experience at all? Yeah, so um, I think I mentioned earlier, I started skiing at the age of three. Um, the first mm-hmm. time I was ever in a show for the main attraction team, I was six years old and you know, I, I really, I love it. It's my, it is my passion and skied every summer with main attraction since then. And, you know, right. improving my skills and, and getting better and learning from all the other people on the team, as well as of course my parents and whatnot. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think too, Peter, that you're pretty much a natural athlete, pretty much every sport you've jumped into, I think you've excelled at. So <laughs> I think part of your success as a water skier is some natural ability, I definitely. would say. Yeah. And I definitely. I owe that to my parents, I guess. Uh, yeah, getting that, yep. getting that through the genes, good and, genes, right? yeah, and helping me out to uh, be the best athlete I can be. Absolutely, right. yeah. And you know, for probably both of you guys, there has to be an element of a low fear factor. Yes, <laughs> you have to not be too afraid. So we just watched that movie Free Solo. Don't know if you guys seen it, but um, oh, the climbing movie. Yeah, the- yeah. I haven't seen it. I've seen the preview, but it looks. Oh my gosh. Even though you know he lives, it's still like my heart was pounding out of my chest. Yes, heart just pounds. <laughs> but they did an MRI on his brain or a CAT scan. I don't, I'm not sure which one. Don't quote me on that. But he does not have fear. So I'm thinking you guys are on that spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh boy, I don't know about that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so Peter, how did you go from skiing in your hometown on your local ski team to being hired as a professional how did that all come about um so i i guess i'd always had a dream since i was a little bit younger you know watching my parents vhs tapes of skiing at sea world yeah and uh always wanted vhs to, yeah, always <laughs> wanted to do I'm that, from that in. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I was growing up doing that. And I was like, oh, man, that'd be so cool to do one day and, and whatnot. And I was in college and I was competing, I guess, at University of New Hampshire for the track and field team. And I loved it there. And I was on YouTube one afternoon and I saw a ski video and it like it sparked up again how much I wanted to do professional skiing. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was in the fall yeah of 2016 and the summer of 2016 I learned a gainer which is uh, a backwards flip on two skis over the ramp wow. um, oh which gosh. is a pretty hard trick I guess to learn that is I would very, very useful <laughs> very useful I guess in an application to professional show so with the permission of my parents I guess I I was able to audition and come down to Florida and try out for the uh, ski team down here. Right. And uh, I got accepted for a summer position. And after the summer, they asked me to stay full time. And so I've been down here since then. Obviously, they must have been happy with what they were seeing. (laughs) Yes. So what's it like to be a professional water skier? Like what's a typical day like for you? And what are the advantages and drawbacks? Okay, so uh, the typical day, I guess, is we we get to work and the first thing you do is you check your schedule. Mm -hmm. Say my schedule is a one and a D2. That means one, I have a wakeboard. And so I do my morning job that corresponds with a wakeboard, which is um, I'll like take all the wetsuits out of the dry room. I'll hang all the wetsuits, all the life jackets, and then uh, basically help prep the dock for the first show. Mm Mm-hmm. And then so that will be my morning job. After your morning job is done, uh, you usually go to stage and we'll do some stage work, go over the fight scenes, go through the different dances, um, stuff fight like that. Scenes. It's, uh, <laughs> I want to go see this show. It sounds good. Yeah, just little sword fights and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And then so after that's done, uh, you have a little bit of time to go out and practice if you need to practice. If not, just relax a little bit, stretch out, whatnot. And then first show after first show is done. Clean up the dock. You have lunch. Practice if you want to before the second show. You have your second show. Do whatever you have to do during that show. And then when that show's over, everyone cleans up the dock, cleans up the stage, puts everything back in its uh, correct place. And that's your day right there. Wow. So how many people are part of your team? Uh, part of the show so per day we have eight guys on and four girls 
So mm-hmm. 12 total, I guess in total of our team, we probably have 20 people or 20 to 30 people, I guess, on our roster, but only 12 people work a day. Right. Because not everybody works every day. Correct. So, so we have a lot of yeah. part-time people that have skied professional in the past that will come mm-hmm. in, you know, on a weekend if, if we're short a person or something. Oh, that's good. Yeah. The on-call crowd. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The right. weekend crew. <laughs> the weekend crew. That sounds like a fun number though. So do you have a favorite trick or is there something you're known for, Peter? Is that like the backward gainer flip you were talking about? Yeah. (laughs) So I guess my favorite trick would be uh, a gainer, a two ski gainer. There's no feeling like it really. You're just kind of, you're floating through the air. Basically, you know, you're looking at the water. You can see the whole crowd as you're coming down to land the trick. Obviously your main focus is on the water. Is that what you're looking at the whole time? Like, do you Um, have to have a focal point like that? Kind of. So as you're cutting at the ramp, I'm looking at the the very top of the ramp. And as soon as I get to the top of the ramp with my body, my eyes transition to the tops of the trees and I spring off the top of the ramp and throw my head back. And then once I come around, I spot the water and that's pretty much what I'm watching until I land. But, you know, you see a lot more things in your peripherals, such as the guy next to you and then the crowd and, and the boat and whatnot. Do you have to do that a lot in your shows or... Yeah, so I will do that usually once a show um, during the jump act. But if I have opening jump, then I'll sometimes be doing it twice a show. Oh my so gosh! That's, uh, that's definitely so my favorite. So can you trick. pretty much nail it now without? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm very consistent on gainers now. I wow. haven't fallen on one. I don't think in the in the past four months now. And uh, I actually was able to just land a new trick the other day. It's called. I'm not really sure what it's called. I honestly think I'm the first person the Peter, to do it. Peter Hagerty trick. That's what I'd call it. Yeah. Um, you should definitely name it after yourself. Yeah, so I just landed that, which it's basically a 360 spin, but when you're backwards, you let go of the rope, and then you have to re-grab it with the same hand. So oh my you're, you basically don't have the handle in your hands, and the handle's just kind of floating behind you while you're backwards, and That's you got to re-grab. That's crazy. That's oh just my crazy God. stuff. Crazy water. Wow, that is amazing. So, I love yeah. that. That's so cool. So, Peter, are you competing at all these days, or are you just, I shouldn't say just, because obviously this isn't a just. <laughs> Or are you solely working at like Atlanta, not competing? As of now, I'm not really competing. And that's, I guess, one of the disadvantages to the professional life is that's really where your focus is. And your employers don't often want you to go out and do amateur skiing because you can get hurt while you're mm-hmm. gone. And, and right. you know, that affects their show and whatnot. Um, yeah. So as of now, I'm not competing a lot. I'd like to come back to Maine this summer for 2019 and maybe ski with them for a couple weeks and whatnot, but not heavily competing outside of work, no. Yeah, that right. makes sense. And here's just a kind of a side question. I'm wondering if water skiing will ever become an Olympic sport. Have you ever heard them talk about that? Or uh, It's been mentioned. The issue that I've heard with water skiing becoming an Olympic sport is you have variation with every boat driver. Oh, yeah. So it would and be so hard it, to have consistency. Correct. So if it was an Olympic sport, it would be more like cable wakeboarding that um, you may right. have seen. And it's, it's a, basically on a big tow system that goes around a lake because that would be consistent yeah. for every rider. Right, because it would be really tricky to have, yeah, consistent driving. Because then, you know, if an athlete gets a different pull, then they can complain that it's not fair. Right, or Or if you had the best boat driver in the world, that might be (laughs) an advantage. Maybe they could, you know, have robotic ones that are all like perfectly matched (laughs) or something. One boat, one driver. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. But still, they could say, oh, he favored that skier over this skier. And I can see the problems of that. Yeah, that's unfortunate because um, I think it would be a great Olympic sport. I know. For sure. That would be so much fun to watch. Are there any water skiing pros, past or present, that you really admire? Definitely. A lot when I was in college, I kind of idolized Matt May. There's a highlight video of him on YouTube and you watch it and it just, it would blow my mind. You know, he literally does everything that you could do on water skis. And, is he still skiing or uh, is that someone that's kind of retired? He's kind it? of retired now, mm-hmm. um, but he was, you know, the best of the best. And, and I watched his highlight video just about every day in college yeah. uh, before I came down to Legoland because I was so uh, ecstatic about Yeah, about it got you fired up. Exactly. Yeah. How about you, Katie? Gosh, to be honest, not no, no one other than I can think of other than my mom. She was definitely yeah. always my idol and yeah. uh, she could always do, you know, more tricks than I could. And I was, I don't know, I didn't really get into swivel skiing is kind of my thing these days. And I didn't start really swivel skiing until I was 21. So trying to do it all the way up until 21, though, it was just 
always looking up to her being like, how in the heck does she do this? Because I can't even turn around backwards. Yeah. But, Can you explain <laughs> swivel skiing to yeah, anybody that might not sure. know what that is? Yeah. So it's, um, you're on just one solo ski and it's, it's a little bit wider of a board. Mine's 10 inches and mm-hmm. the binding on it actually turns 360 degrees. So the ski stays straight, but the binding rotates. So, so you're doing, you know, your it's tricks. It's crazy. Doing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> You're doing your tricks, your 360s, your 720s, and turning around just on the binding and the ski staying straight. Wow. Well, hey, if you started that at 21 and you're doing that pretty well, that's amazing. That is, that's <laughs> quite an accomplishment. And did I see yeah. um, a video of your girlfriend doing that, Peter? That swivel skis? Yes. Ski? Yeah. Uh, my girlfriend also swivel skis. She's very good. She does 720s just like Katie and whatnot. Yeah, she's pretty amazing at it. Is she part of the show at Legoland? Yes, not- she is. She's part of the show here wow. at Legoland as well. So that's where you guys met. Yes, correct. Just like your parents correct. meeting at water skiing. Well, <laughs> well, they've had a long relationship, so you know, <laughs> you never know. It'd be good karma. It'd be good karma. Hopefully, okay. we didn't jinx you with that. <laughs> no, no, we didn't. No jinxing. <laughs> oh gosh, Katie, you and your husband Evan, who is also a great water skier, as we talked about, have started a new business teaching water skiing. So, can you tell us a little bit about your new business? Sure. Yeah. So, I'm obviously in love with water skiing. With my job, I am lucky enough to have summers off or a a good portion of the summer off. So I decided instead of work for my mom at the rec this summer (laughs) to start up a water ski school and share my passion with teaching people how to water ski throughout the summer. So for sure. So is there a way people could get in touch with you that were interested in that? We can obviously provide any link in the show notes, but if you want to just give yourself a little shout out. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. I have um, a website, 207waterskischool.com. I have a Facebook page and I also have an Instagram page. So they can find me on any of those and send me a message. Right. So does anybody that wants to take you up on your water ski school, do they need any equipment? Do they need any experience or do you provide all of that? I provide everything. All they need is a bathing suit. There you go. (laughs) Bathing suit and a willingness to learn. Exactly. (laughs) And like, what are the options, Katie? all day, half day, by the hour or what? Yeah. Yep. All of the above. We do hour lessons. We do half day lessons. Then we do full day lessons. I'm trying to be able to do a week long summer camp this summer. Just trying to see how my schedule is going to work out, but that's hopefully another option that will be available. Okay. Well, for anybody out there that would like to learn how to water ski, give Katie a call. She'll be in fantastic camps. Thanks, Meg. (laughs) So Peter, you and your brother, Joey, are also amazing snow skiers. I wouldn't be surprised if you're amazing snowboarders too. I don't know that, but I wouldn't be surprised. Not the best. <laughs> anyway, can you tell us a little bit about your adventures on snow skis? Oh, definitely. So, you know, growing up with Joe, my older brother, it was always, who's going to hit the bigger jump? Who's going to do the cooler trick? So we were always right. pushing each other to do the best we could and whatnot. And uh, so that was pretty awesome growing up. And my dad was always there to help us out. We were building a jump in the field right in front of our house by Meg's house. And (laughs) one day we got a really big snowstorm. And so my brother Joe and I decided to build the jump over the road. And so built the jump over the road and we got towed in by the snowmobile. And by the end of the day, we were doing flips over the road into the cul-de-sac. So yeah, it was that was, absolutely, that was pretty fun. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. And I don't know if anybody out there has watched the Olympics where they do the the moguls, a swish, 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 mogul jump, swish, swish, swish. Peter and Joe do that as well, right, Pete? Uh, not so much moguls, but slope style, which is uh, okay. more so it's the jumps just like moguls, but it's also rails. So you jump sideways onto a, a handrail or something like that, and then we'll spin off of it and then hit a jump next something crazy like yeah. that. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And Katie is also a great snow skier, but I'm not sure you do it to that degree, right, Kate? Oh, heck no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have a smaller brain than me. <laughs> it's just, yeah. some of the videos have been amazing, but anyway. It's crazy stuff. I don't know. I'm telling you there's a fear factor or a fearless factor there <laughs> somewhere. <gotta> be, yeah. <laughs> so Peter, what tips would you have for our listeners that are interested in becoming a professional water skier? Uh, so my tips to anyone who, who would like to progress and, and become a professional water skier, if you're not already uh, water skiing on a team, 
I would recommend trying to find your local ski team. There's mm -hmm. uh, many all over the nation. And that's that's really the best way to get the most time behind a boat with people who really know what they're doing with coaching and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and also along with that, if you're able to you know, get behind a boat, whether you have one in your family or a friend has one or an aunt or uncle has one, being behind a boat, being on the water, skiing is the best way to get good at skiing. And if you're not falling, you're not learning anything new. So don't get discouraged just because you're not hitting the jump right away or you can't drop a ski right away or, or you can't even make it off the dock right away. Right. So all the best skiers are falling to learn, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. I bet you can't count how many times you've fallen. No, so. <laughs> not at all. Is there anything you can do in your backyard or any kind of training you would recommend other than getting behind a boat? Um, definitely just muscular training, coordination, things like that would be best for a guy's point of view. I know Katie, you could probably talk about uh, the swivel simulator a little bit uh, mm -hmm. to help girls practice. Yeah, they have a swivel later, it's called, and it's uh, basically a pulley system that you can um, hook your ski into the bottom and then your rope goes into the pulley system and it's supposed to give you a halfway accurate pull um, of what you would feel from a boat so that you can practice your tricks in the off season off of the water. Oh, that's good. How would you practice your jumps and flips? I mean, the first time you do one, is it on the water or to you? Do you Absolutely practice? not. Yeah. Uh, or for me, at least, it's very beneficial to get on a trampoline. I was blessed to have the trampoline at your house growing up. Right. Uh, I know. So, we were all in awe of the, what, what you could do on that trampoline. But <laughs> yeah. Gaining a good aerial awareness will help you to transition to the water if mm -hmm. you're comfortable doing it on land first. Once you're comfortable on land, you take it to the water. And like I said earlier, the, your first one generally won't be that good. But with that general already knowledge and feeling of your body flipping and being upside down or backwards or, or sideways, you know, what have you, it really helps out and all correlates onto the water. It's almost like gymnastics. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. If you're a gymnast, you might become a good water skier. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 We have a gymnast that works at Legoland. Yeah. He was originally a gymnast and then started water skiing and now he's a professional water skier so oh well wow. so that might be a good thing to get into when you're younger absolutely okay that's a good tip too so katie your main job is you are a school nurse so for the listeners that are interested in becoming a nurse a few things about that like what was nursing school like what's it like to be a nurse Sure. Yeah. I um, went to St. Joseph's up in Standish, Maine mm -hmm. for nursing school. It's a four-year bachelor's program there. I know they also offer some associates programs out there, but those usually... Is that a program you would recommend to listeners? St. Joe's, absolutely. Yeah. It was a great nursing program. It's a small school, so not much flexibility with schedule mm -hmm. just because there was, I believe, only like a hundred of us in our nursing class. They didn't offer many nursing classes. It was kind of like here's two, they're back to back, and this is what you're taking. So if you want flexibility with your schedule, probably not a great school to go to. But if you have, you know, nothing else on your agenda, then it, it's not bad. But yeah, lots of clinical hours in school. But it's great because you get to try out all the different places that you can work as a nurse, which I think that's the best part about being a nurse is there are so many different places you can work. Mm -hmm. You know, you can work in the traditional hospital setting, or you can work in the nursing home, you can work in a school setting, I could probably go and work at Legoland as a nurse in the first aid booth. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that gives, and that's true. There's a lot of different settings you could work in. Yeah. Your nursing jobs are in demand. Absolutely. So it, yeah. It's a great career to get into if you love it and you're hoping to get a job after school. Exactly. Absolutely. And with college being so expensive, it's nice knowing that there's going to be a job waiting for you on the other side of nursing school. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Do you feel like as a nurse, you can have a flexible schedule or maybe the job you took is more set because you're in a school? But Yeah, I think the great things about nursing is because you can pick where you work, you can kind of pick your schedule. So I know a lot of girls I went to school with work three 12 hour shifts and they love having four days off a week. I worked that when I got right out of school, didn't love the long 12 hours. Mm -hmm. um, right. And so that's, you know, part of the reason why I got into the school nursing and having that set Monday through Friday schedule, but also having all those built in vacations. And like I said, my summers off, which are super important to me with my passion of water skiing. So it's nice to be able to pick your schedule based on, you know, where you want to go and work. I have a friend 
friend who actually just started working for an insurance company as a nurse. So she's now working from home three days a week and in the office two days a week. So there's definitely lots of options out there. Right. Yeah, that's great. And that's another great thing about a nursing career, the flexibility and the options. Yeah. And like Katie said, you can sort of make it fit to your lifestyle or your priorities. And for Exactly. I know. I keep telling Evan, I want to be a snowbird. And I'm like, I'd be all set. I can just go be a travel nurse in Florida for the winters <laughs> and find a travel position up in New England for the summers. Right. And now we just yeah. have to figure out and his job. I don't blame <laughs> you there at one bit. It's, you know, it's actually snowing currently. I don't yeah. know if that's where you guys are, Meg and Katie, but it's it snowing my location. Yeah. So I'm not happy about that. Anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and Katie, at the beginning of the podcast, you talked about you work at a school and with children that have disabilities, you talked about possibly getting them out water skiing. How would that work? So they have um, a few different pieces of equipment that they can use. One super basic would just be like a tube with like a back support and you just put an individual on both sides of them to help set them up depending you know, on their disability level. They also have something called a sit ski, which is just a very wide ski and with like almost like a chair on on it, which is called a cage that they would sit in. And once again, there'd be individuals skiing on both sides of them and holding them up from tipping from side to side. And then there's other skis that tie together for people who might be more advanced or less disabled. So and you went ahead and got certified to do that, right, Katie? Yeah, yep. I took a course this this winter to get certified so that we could host one right here in Sanford this summer. Was that course, Katie, in case one of our listeners would like to do something similar? Um, It was through USA Water Ski Foundation, and it's through the Adaptive Association through them. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but... Mm -hmm. If they go to USA Water Skiing, they could probably find it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good information because you never know. Yeah. You might have just inspired someone. (laughs) Well, Katie and Peter, thank you so much for coming on and doing the podcast. And I think anybody out there that's interested in water skiing or being a professional water skier or nursing. They are going to find this so enjoyable and informative. And thanks for sharing what it's been like for you to be professional skiers. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Oh, you're so welcome. And for running a ski team too. (laughs) Yes, no problem. You guys have definitely got a lot of things going on. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Definitely. Thank you guys for being on our podcast. We really enjoyed chatting with you today. Yes, thank you guys. Guys, not a problem at all. Those two have really interesting careers and lives. Yeah, I love how they grew up in a water skiing family and are still at it. I know, right? It was interesting to hear the two different ways they have turned water skiing into careers. It shows what kind of options are out there for anyone who wants to water ski professionally. Right, that is so true. I love how Katie is finding a way to connect the children she works with to her love for water skiing. A win-win for everyone. Exactly. You can tell how passionate they both are about what they are doing, which is always inspiring. I am really looking forward to seeing the performance this summer. Yeah, me too. If you are in Southern Maine this summer, come and check out the Maine Attraction Water Skiing Show. You will find the links in the show notes. And if you are in Florida, go check out Pete and his water ski team at Legoland. And as a final note, anyone interested in learning more about our business, academic and career advising services, we invite you to visit our website and we will include that link in the show notes. We assist people with changing careers, possibly finding that first job out of college, the college admissions process, selecting an academic major, deciding on a career, or things of that nature. You can check it all out on our website, Academic and Career Advising Services. We are located in Kennebunk, Maine. However, for your convenience, we also offer video conferencing services. You're never too old to change your career or to go back to college, and you're never too young to begin thinking about your future. We enjoy serving people of all ages. If you enjoyed listening to today's podcast and would like to help us out, could you please leave a rating or review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts? This really helps others to find our podcast. We would greatly appreciate it. Also, to get all the latest on upcoming episodes, please follow us on social media. All of those links will be included in the show notes. Thank you and have a great day. Thanks so much for listening.